peace and Islam. <laughs> this should be a short one. So preview to to the we get to the name to the place names in the maps. We're going to study the notes that come with these uh, place names. We want to see where it came from, who it belonged to, the history and the stories behind them. But first, we're going to do a preview so you understand the terms that's being used when we get to that point. thousand virgins and then likes so we got antif and not with the antif and the what we call a black power symbol today <laughs> in the Maya temple you see we're in the same thing Canaanites of the West slightly different crowns but like even with the same sciences as we see those of Canaan This is ancient can ancient can like when we get the tarsus. From this museum, you see the architecture. Again, you can find this type of architecture all over Spain and Portugal, right? So you see 1537, and they use the term Negroes. But if you look at 1537, that's a, a very early date when it comes to the, uh, the history. <coughs> 1492, you only got one couple decades in. So right here we got Beatrix States. You gonna see that term? So I'm gonna try to explain it. It's like a factory, a benefactory, a good factory, a good woe, a rescue that they were setting up. Portugal and Spain. And they took over these towns in the Reconquista. They set up what we call a benefactor. And these been Beatrix lords. So you would have been a citizen or a noble from, from these states who survived the war or whatever. 
and they become they get um, rights to be the politicians of the states even though Portugal and Spain already took the state away and put it under the lordship of the Christian law it still ran practically the same as how the Moors did when they ran it and it's the same way the United States took the science same more science that's why we get the vote for our ruler so that we we are considered laws of Beatry Beatria because we can run for office and and be the lordship but ultimately the church is the ultimate lord of, in the system and that's what we see in the day this is in Spain when we conquist the Beatria, Beatria de Mar Amor according to which the peasants could choose their lord among candidates of any origin. The lineage Behetria, according to which the peasants can only choose between the inhabitants of noble origin of the region, that is to say, the natives are diversals. So, remember that? Thus, before they create the pirates of the Caribbean, they were called the Pirates of Tortuga, which means turtle. We got the island of Tortuga, Turtle Island, in the Caribbean, Islas de Tortuga. by the Castilians until the 18th century to every land governed by Islam. It was Berbisha, quote unquote, in North Africa, but also the American Levant, so the American East, to Castile. The Kingdom of Fez until the 16th century. So you got one aspect of the history showing the Treaty of Tordesillas and you got 1430 you got the same thing going on before that decades before the Treaty of Tordesillas called the distribution of the Kingdom of Faith so that's what she's talking about when the entire continent to the Castilians and the church we know that's the Kingdom of Faith so although Head of the kingdom was Morocco. Head of the kingdom on this side called Morocco. We'll get to that next. It was made up of several minor kingdoms. So we're going to see that a couple of times on these videos. We show the different breakdowns of how the Moors had their kingdoms at the time. It included the whole of Africa and the Islands of the Indies, its eastern province being the Barbary Algarve, which included Morocco. So that today we call Morocco was called Barbary Algarve. So the Castilians and Portugal. While the Kingdom of Morocco was still on the side at that time. The Kingdom of Fez, which as a kingdom and not the whole continent, from the east, it started in Melilla, from overseas in the east, crossing the sea. Islam was dominant power in much of America from Brazil to Mexico. And that's the kingdom of Fez as the whole continent. 
but in the 16th century, the place name was limited to Guyana, being the Oyapak River bordering Morocco. So you got the Cayman Affairs as the kingdom, and then you got the whole continent being called the Cayman Affairs, and the distribution of the Cayman Affairs. <laughs> came Morocco as the kingdom. It started from the Oyapak River, which empties into the bay of the same name, the Bay of Oyapak, and all this on the coast of South America, Colchic, which ends at Cape Orange. It limited its limit to the east, reached Punta de Allende, or the first cross, Primera Cruz. Ghana's borders with Brazil, it is likely that it lasted to Pernambuco. Then you get after Pernambuco, you get to another Moorish kingdom, you get into Mauritania. So as you can see in this poem, this whole Spanish poem talk about the Indies, and he was saying that when they talk about the Indies at that time, they've been calling them Los Prestos. Los Prietos, which is now Los Negros. They had to put that down in so you can know what they were talking about at that time. This time period. I'm mean, using the term Prietos, using that term on the peninsula, Iberian Peninsula, and in America. Like this, Florida pay attention to the so-called Indian queen, as they call it. Always got the, uh, umbrella on ritual. So they were killed by taxes, ending the English and the Dutch presence on the coast of the Guinea, which delimited to rip the rivers. When there was war, or prohibition there, fish was scarce in Huvela and the Algarve. Talking about Iberian Peninsula. When there was war or prohibition there, fish was scarce in Huvela and Algarve. Exporting Andalusia of the 15th century with the northern countries by customers, the one at the end of the 16th century so 1500s, imported cod. So we're talking about the cod fishing. Cape Cod Bay. And in the 12th century, no, not 15th, 17th century, Vaga Ciso Fish. So they changed names, but it's still the same industry going on. Just change names so people can lose the history when that happened. Inland people, the conquerors, were there. Andalusian pilots, practical in the big and the small seas. So the people from inland <laughs> were the pilots. Back to call the big and small sea. The big sea is the sea of darkness, known as the sea of darkness by the moors. Or the Atlantic Ocean today. Or Mare Yeguas. Or the Ethiopic Sea. All those different names by different people. In different times, right? So small sea is Marpa Quina. You had the Gulf of Mexico being called Marco Quinn at one time and you got the Caribbean being called Marco Quinn. <coughs> Pacific being called the South Sea. And one from Palos, Alaminos, discovered Mexico to Cortez. So discovering means registering or baptizing the place. It sounds false, so you got you got the Palos. Remember that Isabel had a lot of business in Palos buying 
please um Beatrice states making mm -hmm. states um under her lordship once she did that she get all the sailors who already know how to sail over here the one from palos been the sailor in columbus ship too it sounds false that there were so-called blacks and moors in america long before columbus arrived and the reason why because it's being suppressed in all, in all manner and called something else and yet they were widely documented the former in brazil and guyana called them prieto so we just look at that earlier example the latter introduced the quran nothing more natural because the wind that dragged the last west are born in the Maghreb of our day. So she's saying, oh, sail wind start exactly from that Morocco to the Guyana area. The Guyanas. The Moros deny access on the pretext that they did not know how to sail. <laughs> Lucas the Tui tell us about the Navy, about 1,270 Moorish ships whose reigning Wamba would have invaded Andalusia if they had not been destroyed by a miraculous fire. So they make up stories like that, that these Moors didn't know how to sail, even though they've been on the seas like crazy. But when they write it in history, books, quote unquote, that's what they used to say. And the same thing they used to say about the Moors over here, that they've been wild and naked and stuff like that. So, on the pretext. Sheba ran in one of the two Ethiopias and you know we got two Africa, so we got two everything. You can find maps, we got India. Africa. So, the two Ethiopians is us two, two Mozambique, and you know, really three, because they did it again near India, and the Southeast Islands. We don't know conquest against Moors. So Caribbean island was called Saba. The sovereign visited Solomon in Jerusalem and he gave him aromas. There were never such aromas as these given by the Queen of Sheba to King Solomon. It is said in the Chronicles, he Ram, King of Tyre, inherited from his father a technician in purple, son of a wife and a daughter of Dan. Tyrus purple was raised superior to the violet in Sidon. In the 18th century, the Indians of Guayaquil dyed the cotton's purple. So, look at all these, all these reference points. You can get the oldest book talking about these things. But you ain't know what they're talking about if you don't got the background of the land, the forest flora and fauna which is the plants and everything that comes with the land naturally he robbed on his feast halfway with solomon this was imported 666 gold talents from Ophir every year also precious stones with algumen wood salters were made ten string instruments they accompanied the singing of the psalms Never in the land of Judah has such wood been seen. So that's quote unquote, I mean, that we said it in history. Three in three years, Tarsus ships returned. They brought gold, silver, ivory, apes, and turkeys. In literature and cinema, Solomon mines were the door of the house in the Sudan, but not in the Bible. There was also no gold in the East Guinea, the, the one in Africa today. 
because they didn't have it. The men of Benin went to bronze to express themselves. Trace, trace of America, the gold, Solomon, the temple had it. The order was founded in Jerusalem around the 11th century, and it was the custom of the knights to make the psalm sing for their soul. They called devotion Psalter. Luke of Toy said that David invented the instrument. You see how deep this, that go back, and it come all the way up to history to you today. They're telling you that the, the Knights Templar was already, they still had a secret of women going on, and that been traded to the Americas in those days. With these Canaanites that we see earlier, and more bright stuff like that. You see robes. So if I gotta just go back and look at the paintings on the wall over there, you see the same thing. So we are on, in Brazil. We got Maricabo today. You can see how small changes in Rome called it Cabo al Morocco in Rome. And on our maps, we've got Maricabo out there. Everything that they find that been not everything but most they find that was um as listed as something that was Arabic, they just made it more Spanish or Portuguese more vulgar. Because Spanish is a Moorish language, it is Arabic, just vulgar <laughs> with Latin. Same thing happened during the Punic times and just continuation of the two cultures. So as you can see on this map, you see the split between the two lands right there. And it happened on the Cape of Aguirre, but we can see how it's Agujia today. Uh, not even today on this map. This map might be 16, 1700s. And you see Tenerife right there. We're supposed to be in the Canary Islands. <laughs> on the Canary Islands, you can find all place names from over here and the stories that connect with it, what happened. Like, uh, Negargua, Negargua, land of blacks. They call Negargua. Over here is Negargua. Over there is Negargua, the older version. Under the conquest of the Kingdom of Fez. America with in our English understanding. Yeah, tons of books around the world talking about what happened here under different terms. So we have Zamba, which is very important. You can see the two crosses right there. These crosses is points of baptism where they're going to capture you, <laughs> take you here to these rescues. Beatrice states. And one, you got Santa Marta, Saint Marta. And we got Ken we got Kenaga, but that's really Senegal. The Senegal of Hannah the Navigator and the Senegal of 
Enrico the Navigator. That's why they named Enrico the Navigator because they know damn well he gone to the same areas as Hanno centuries earlier. But they reset the history in 1492, so we get the reset version where he going down the coast of Africa, both of them. So all this right here just suddenly appeared one day. <laughs> and not in the sea. The Cartagena right there. And the whole thing is Cartagena. So the Seneca River, study of the day, spell a little different. What's deep is the fact that I can take these words, change one vowel, and get books talking about the, what I search for. Change another vowel, get more books talking about what I search so you know how much you'll never get through it all. Like the Orinoco River, when I researched Orinoco, I changed the, the beginning O. There's so much vowels in that word, I, I know they playing a lot of games with that. So I changed the beginning O to A, Orinoco. Get books talking about the Orinoco River. Change, them, change the Orinoco, change the I at the end to a E R O. It, no matter which way, how much I put it, it's insane. But that just goes to show how old something is. Get different authors, different time periods to talk about that thing. And don't really know how it is spoken, spelled, but trying to use phonetics. Pluricontinentalism. Pluricontinentalism. That's what we're going to really be talking about. Overseas kingdoms and the likes. Conquest, Reconquista, Treaties, Tortoises and stuff like that. False claims. <laughs> you here, you still here. You just ain't know you was, you ain't claiming you, what you got. Cause they only have factories, wherever that is. We're gonna show you. You got the right, you see the two Ethiopians on the two. Well, that's the two Mozambiques. Back then, the Mozambiques. We got, that's why you got Ghana and all three spots that they got the Ghana right there. Right there. <laughs> and right there. As she said, on this side, they ain't really even ever could control Ghana. And they can tell on this. But Ghana did still get end up being Venezuela and Guyana, you know, end up being Guyana, French Guinea, and Dutch Guinea. <laughs> and I think English got a little piece. And that's the islands of the Indies. Every island in this vicinity going across. Even these canaries. That's why canaries, the names from right here, ain't up right here. Because these are all the canaries to them. You got some names, everything can start duplicating the game and you start looking like in this history, even in Japan, Morokawi. I think that's where it is. Down here, you still get into Barberies, all the barberies are down here to them. And up here in North Africa. Here, yeah, all the way in the West Coast, parts of Mexico, all this, and of course, Arabia. Definitely Mexico. That's all I put.
hip hop to the nearest idea of colonialism multi state because we're dealing with trade and commerce, worldwide trade and commerce, not no that's the most important shit in the world that's going on. And it stemmed from, like they said earlier, Haram and it before that we got going back to Egypt and Sumer. They got records, they people been keeping records like a a world class government like to the better than the day they've been better as civilization as the day we ignorant compared to how they've been doing it they have so many languages translating them thing talk about supercomputer type capacity back then it started to fall off when they tried to do Portugal and them and the church they tried to do them They just start stealing and shit. United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil, and the Algarbis. See the plural continental monarchy. Just to show you that what you were talking about earlier, the Algarve, Morocco, Brazil, Portugal, all this had to happen. This happened in America between Moors and Christians. That they ain't even tell you about. Manuals do not deny the existence of the Kingdom of Sousse. That's another kingdom. Integrated into Morocco. They place it in the south of the Atlas. And they declare that it produced sugar cane. Whose cultivation requires a huge amount of water. To justify it, it is said that the Sahara, at least on the western coast, was very fertile land in the 15th century. Crossed by large rivers. Today very modest oases. Rivers. Or something like rivers. So much has changed that even the islands disappeared. Sighted at each step by sailors, habitual of Alan Mar, Ponyente, Guinea, and Lamina, long before Columbus was born. So, how when Columbus come around and baptized everything, re register everything, change stories, they going from Morocco, sugar cane factories, Atlas. <laughs> rivers, ships, walls to New World, Tierra Fermi, naked Indians, ignorant people who ain't no nothing, stuff like that. No no kingdoms, no nothing. But the same stories. Specialists of prehistory archaeology placed the drying up of Sahara about four thousand years ago. So that means it always it been like that like how it's now for a long time. Not in the 1400s. It ain't been like South America in the 1400s. Vulgar Tourist Guides presents the Saharan Mogador as a sugar century in the 16th century. century. Sugar center in the 16th century. And forming tariff of the 17th century that the sugar of Barbary competed with that of Madeira, Brazil, and the Canary Islands. In the six, in 1637, Muli Muhammad El Sikh was titled Emperor of Barbary, King of Slayers, Sus Dara, Tafalit, with the Kingdom of Guinea, Gago, and Tanbuktu, in the province of Haha, Duquela, and Tamzina. Tamizna. So you had her ask her title. She was she on her shit like that shit on, on both sides of the ocean at that time, sixteen thirty seven, so I stole it in the can too. So after fourteen ninety two stole on both sides now. Some did not existence of Morocco as a country before the eighteenth century. It is true that it is diminished since it has been reduced to the Algarve of Barbary. So that's the only place name that get that Morocco today. Instead of overseas kingdoms in the plural continentalism, as it were. <laughs> the head of the kingdom, that is the province of greater entity, were on the other side of the sea, on this side. Mentioned by the Chronicle since the time when Islam was a great nation running from the Middle East to the Indies. The Fez boat in 818 was the province of, the, of this kingdom. In the 17th century, 
in decline, mainly because of civil strife and constant intervention of Spain. We have allusions to commerce to the important library stolen in 1614 from Muley Kidal and embassies. I remember the name Muley, <laughs> among which stands out in 1937, headed by Friar Nicholas de Velasco. In 1639, the Duke of Medina Sidonia fearing that the King of England would take over the Alcazaba and the city of Sali by way of vassalage in the manner of King of Castile and Portugal. So they've been um, kind of scared that England were going to start um, setting up their own Beatry states where they get one of the natives and have them to be the lord of the state under them. And they write in their books that they discovered something. In the same manner the kings of Castile and Portugal by way of vassalage. See? And once they were there, they wouldn't have been he probably already ain't been the city of Sale in the Portuguese of Castile records. But that's where he been. And he was warning them, fearing that they would England would have tried that. So you want foot up the fourth that if it happened the principle of conquest, quote unquote, that the Spanish crown had introduced on that course would be questioned. It is known that the Spanish monarchs wielded the right of sovereignty over the entire American continent. So they've been using that conquest of the Kingdom of Fez and Morocco and stuff like that. And resetting the history with the discovery. It is known that the Spanish monarchs wielded the right of sovereignty over the entire American continent, but in no news that they had claims about North Africa or the rest of the continent. So the Africa, they're mixing the stories up. Basically, this is what he's saying. You get the 1639 report of situation in Sali, the principle of conquest, that was she get that from. The original 1639 report. Not a copy. 1637, trade with Morocco, wax, salt, Peter, and wheat. So, the different Morocco, the one on this side. This way, we find out about his stolen books in the Moroccan embassy. You see, when you talk about empire, we talking about overseas kingdoms also. So we can see he holding up the Golden Globe Award. The Golden Globe Award was those who went across the sea, Alan Mar at that time. So let's see some of the Portuguese kings of Castile and Leon. The trifold leaf, trifold leaf in the golden globe, and the gold. The fact that they had gold means they find about the <laughs> the Moorish Americans. They find about overseas. The golden globe. All of these are the people of um, the order of Christ, the the navigator inside the school of navigation in Lisbon. And it's all stemmed from the reconquest. The reconquest means they come to conquer Moorish kingdoms. Simple as that. Golden Globe Awards. That's one of the schools. You see the star for it. So you know they take these these things from the moors and the walls. And then has to recall the something else. On this side, over here, you can get the original story against the Moors and the Portuguese. On this side, it's the they calling it something else. That's where they um, take Hannibal the Navigator and um, Henry the Navigator. That 
this California, the one there, the one in Mexico, the old one. So he said, and of course, the Portuguese continued their advance into North Africa. In 14, see, that's what the story is saying, things like Morocco and Fez, but they're talking about a different one. In 1459, Alfonso V founder of the Order of the Tower and Sword. Closely linked to the order was the legend that Muslim rule of Africa would end once the, con the Christian prince conquered faith. Accordingly, all aristocrats ready to fight in Africa were accepted into the order. The obverse of the above coin alludes to its foundation. You see the little trifold thing uh what people in this leads up to this lead up to the fourteen ninety two when this then a great reset happened. All this get changed. But all this is connected to the forty ninety two. That just been a reset. So to go back to Tarsus we see one of the kings of Israel, Azia, he makes ships to go to Tarsus. So you know the line's still going on, he's still hustling, he's still selling that thing across overseas, back and forth, east and west. They made a ship at Ezion Eber to go to Tarsus. And then we find evidence, Let's see, cargo platform for ships from Phoenicia. From Asia and get born, get better in Phoenicia. And we got modern day, we got evidence of inscriptions in Maine where the cargo platform was made for ships from there. So, again, that's giving us more evidence that we're dealing with the land of Tarsus. So, we're going to start to see that later. More and more. Yeah, this might be, yeah, this will be the last one for this video. It was imported by the Guzmans from when they appear in the Castilian history into the reign of D, um, the reign of D. Duarte, I think. The friends went to his, his Cabo Blanco for fish for the Lica and Cabo Cudos, Cabo Cudos. And in Cabo del Palmar, slaves were hunted and a gulf of the blacks in the time of Carlos the V, the choirs of Puerto de Santa Maria captured quote unquote fish in Cape Aguera. Remember what we see earlier with Aguja. That's the area we're talking about. Let me tell you the crosses. The crosses is where um we get into that more and more. And when they say they captured the fish, right? Quote unquote, you got to put that in quotes because when they, once they conquer you, they baptize you, they change your name. And what we think we being called in phase, or pays, which means fish in Spanish. And fish got a lot of meaning into it too. We'll get into it later, part of the next video. dealing with the sea and spring and autumn campaigns so that's important you can follow along with these Castilians and these Guzmans these campaigns that they were going on from Spain and the reason why the the, uh, the season important because from Spain to the North Africa after day the seasons ain't really that important. Right, right, they cross from the streets. And they which lasted three months, point of arrival, the owner of Noco. <clears throat> Puerto must guide it by ninety by storm ninety seven degrees. It was
was frequent that from the Amazon coast ran northeast. It ran northeast. So she could pinpoint where these schools was been coming over here and what they doing by reading their records. So the dark ocean soon ceased to frighten Henrique navigators. They engulf when we say the dark ocean is the Atlantic known to those moors who were in Portugal at that time. Maybe Andalusia. They engulfed themselves far from all continents and found the lovely islands lost in the Atlantic. They defied by one the capes of Africa, Borjador Branco, which means orange, Palmas, and beyond. They saw the desert shores giving way to tropic green. They saw all Arab traces fade away and Berber types succeeded by the genuine Negro. Yet the intriguing course ran on and on, apparently forever. Don Henrique never showed signs of discour discouragement. He colonized Madeira and the Azores. He built fortresses and trading factories on the coast of Africa and sent his caravels far out to sea towards the unknown west. Whether they reached the Antilles 40 years in advance of Columbus or Brazil 50 years before Cabral is a question that historians are debating still. It is certain that the Infante sought to penetrate the undiscovered world in all directions, but he never lost sight of the East and Bristol won. So this modern day person really believe the same thing we going to do but he don't got the he's still worrying about these so-called historians debating something he ain't no debate we know so till next time peace <laughs>